It's finally time to round up my favorite shoes of 2022. Let's go. Good morning, YouTube. What's up, everybody? I hope you're safe and healthy and happy and doing okay. And happy new year to all of you. And I figured today, what better day than to talk about my favorite shoes of the year. This is by far my favorite video to do every year. So I'm really excited to share it with all of you. I tried a lot of shoes in 2022 and the majority of them were pretty good, but we did have a couple flops, I guess you could say. You can check out that video right here. But today it's all about positivity and we're gonna talk about five shoes that I really, really liked, my top five, and then I have two honorable mentions. These shoes aren't in any particular category. I know last year I kind of divided it into different categories. This year we're just gonna talk about my favorite shoes, although they kind of are all different categories when I think about it. But whatever before we get on with the list i do want to say thank you all so much for supporting my channel in 2022 i can't thank you enough for all of the likes and the comments and the sharing of the videos it means a lot to me and it just helps to keep the channel moving on forward and that's what we're gonna do in 2023 and one more thing before we get started, the majority of these shoes, if not all of them, were sent to me by either Running Warehouse or the shoe brand themselves. However, they're not gonna see this video before you. They can't tell me what to say, and all of my opinions are always my very own. Without any further ado, let's get to the honorable mentions for 2022. First up, we have the Hoka Mach 5. I, like most people, was a really big fan of the Hoka Mach 4 when that shoe came out, uh, but I was disappointed in the Mach Supersonic that came out in early 2022. So I was really worried about how the Mach 5 would be. Happy to say it was a tremendous improvement over not only the Mach 4, but the Mach Supersonic. The ProFly Plus foam here gives you a nice squish and softness to the ride, but maintains a liveliness and energy that keeps you feeling like the shoe isn't dead. It didn't make the top five because there was just other shoes that I ended up liking better in 2022, um, but it was definitely one that I enjoyed and one that I felt needed to make the list in some way. Next up for honorable mentions, we have the Puma Deviate Nitro 2. This is a fun shoe, one that I just recently kind of started trying out, which is partially why it's just an honorable mentions. I just don't have enough miles in it to really put it in a top five. Uh, and there are other shoes that I liked better, but uh, what I will say is that I was a fan of the Deviate Nitro 1. I enjoyed it. It didn't get to full review, but now that I've had both of them, the one and the two, I really see how this is just a better shoe. The Nitro Elite Foam gives you sort of that super shoe vibe with that springy, bouncy foam. And the plate in here also gives you a little propulsion that a standard daily trainer just doesn't give. The upper is nice, the outsole has fantastic grip, and I think that this shoe could provide a lot of runners with different things that they might need and will be durable for many miles. All right, so now with the honorable mentions out of the way, we'll talk about my top five shoes. These aren't really in any particular order, but I will save the favorite shoe of the year for the last one. First up, for top five shoes of the year on the Run Like Heller channel, the Sockety Endorphin Pro 3. I love this shoe. I absolutely adore the way that it feels underfoot. I think it is the best version of the Pro yet. And you'd think, yeah, well, it's the three, it better be, but that's not always the case. Here, it really is the case. They've widened the forefoot a bit, made it feel more accessible, more enjoyable to run in, less aggressive. And the foam feels much improved. Somehow they managed to make this feel softer than previous Endorphin Pros, but also more responsive. I don't know how they did it, but it's a big win for me. I found myself grabbing this during the summer when I was marathon training for my tempo runs. I'm here to tell you, if you think that this shoe is just made for racing, you're wrong. It can absolutely handle the workouts and the speed days that your training requires. Next up on the list, we have the New Balance Fresh Foam More V4. This is a beautifully crafted New Balance shoe that provides you with everything you'd need for your easy long run days. It's got the soft, comfortable upper. It's got the thick boy chunk of Fresh Foam X. 
for the midsole. And while it may look like one, it doesn't feel like a brick on your foot. This is the only shoe I think of when I wanna take it easy and give my feet a little treat. The Moore V4 is a tank. It can handle all of those long distance runs and runs where you just wanna put it on cruise control, not care about your pace and just take it easy, which is the majority of what I've kind of been doing since I've stopped marathon training. In the off season, I've just kind of been running easy. And another positive to this shoe is that I do feel a little bit of rolling forward rocker technology. I thought I liked the Moore V3. Now I realize I really like the Moore V4. Will I like the Moore V5? We'll find out. On the complete opposite end of the spectrum, another shoe on my top five list is the Saucony Ride 15. For a time of 2022, this was my absolute favorite shoe to run in and walk in and just be in in general. And you might be thinking, why would that be? It's nothing special. It's about as basic of a daily trainer as you can possibly get. And I think that's why I fell in love with it. You just have a slab of regular power run foam and engineered mesh and a pretty simple outsole, call it a day, there's your Ride 15. But the shoe feels a little bit more magical to me than it would seem on paper. The power run foam, while firmer than other shoes that are in my top five, does still provide you with cushioning and protection from the road. And it's firm enough that you could also take it on those faster runs if that's something that you wanna do. I also found the upper of the shoe to be one of the best that I tried this year. It is so comfortable. The only reason why I kind of stopped running in it during my marathon training is because my PF issues started to flare up a bit when I would start taking this on double digit runs. Somebody who doesn't have PF problems, <laughs> my wife ran a marathon, ran the Chicago Marathon in the Ride 15. So it just goes to show you, this shoe can do everything. Now we got the final two shoes of 2022. Pause this video, comment down below what you think they're gonna be, don't cheat, that's lame, and see if you're right. Okay, did it? You commented, you ready? In second place for 2022, we have the Asics Super Blast. This shoe looks bigger than my head in this camera screen, and it's probably because it is. It is a huge shoe, and Kind of a head scratcher to me, but I think that's what makes it so good. The Super Blast is exactly what I was hoping the Nova Blast 3 would feel like. It checks off all those boxes. They give you their Flight Foam Blast Turbo Foam, which is their Super Shoe Foam, their most advanced foam, followed by under that, that like green layer there is the FF Blast Plus, which is another pretty premium foam from the brand and they just pair so well together. You get performance, response, energy return, cushion from that turbo foam, and then the FF Blast Plus gives you even more protection, adds a little bit of stability, and it just makes it that much more durable. I think the best part about the Super Blast is that ASICS didn't put a plate in it. So you get to explore what it feels like to run in a premium super shoe foam without the uh, aggressiveness that some plates tend to bring. I have been using this shoe for a lot of different runs. I've been taking it super long. I've been taking it super short, 5K distance. I've been going easy. I've been picking up the pace and it does everything pretty damn well. The price tag on the shoe is hefty. Yes, that is probably the most controversial thing about it. But to me, it's worth it. And I know some of you will get annoyed by me saying that, but I don't care. I love this shoe. It's sort of like the Ride 15 in a sense that it can do it all, but it's gonna give you a completely different sensation than the Ride 15 would. And it probably would have been my favorite shoe of the year had I not tried the last shoe on my list. Can you guess what it is? You probably can guess what it is. Here's the big moment, the final shoe, my favorite shoe of 2022 is the New Balance Super Comp trainer. I mean, it was pretty obvious, right? As a running shoe YouTuber, I have tried a lot of running shoes. There have been plenty over the years that have caught me by surprise and really exceeded my expectations, but none of them feel to this day as cool and as good to me, as wild, as surprising, as fun of a ride as the Super Comp trainer. 
As you can see, you have an illegal amount of fuel cell foam here, and you also have a carbon fiber plate, which you can see, but it's not the standard aggressive carbon plate that you find in super shoes uh, on the market. It's an energy arc, so it's configured a little bit differently to make it more accessible for daily training and everyday use. And when I tell you I wanted to wear this shoe every day, I mean it. During my marathon training cycle, I switched to this shoe. I wasn't sure about it at first, but after a couple runs, I fell in love with it. My PF pain went away and I just did not wanna wear anything else. Like I had to force myself to. It feels trampoline-like. I mean, I can't describe it. It's one of those things that you just need to try to understand. In fact, I ran a marathon, I PR'd a marathon in the SC Trainer. And I know some of you are like, that's a heavy shoe. That's what you wore during a marathon? Yeah, it is. And I don't regret it at all. I would do it again, probably will do it again. I'm super impressed with New Balance. I gotta give it to them for thinking outside of the box and taking a risk on a Frankenstein looking shoe and just hitting it out of the park. It's that good, trust me. All right, well, there you have it. Those are my top shoes for the year of 2022. If you wanna check out any of these shoes on your own, maybe get a pair yourself, you can do so at the link in the description of this video. Keep in mind, this is an affiliate link with Running Warehouse, which doesn't mean much for you, it just helps out my channel, so I can keep this channel going for another straight year. What was your favorite shoe of 2022? Comment down below if it's one of these shoes. I'd love to know if it's one that I didn't even talk about. I'd also love to know that uh, your opinion, your thoughts matter here, so comment away. Well, everyone, that concludes this video of my top five favorite shoes of the year. If you enjoyed it, please like it down below and subscribe. And when you're done with all that, hit the notifications bell so you can find out every time I upload a new video. I think best colorway kind of goes to the Puma, but what do you guys think? I have another video for you next week, but in the meantime, get out there, get on the grind, and don't forget to run like heller. See you next time. Yeah. I ran the I know you did. Yeah. Should I say that? In fact, somebody who doesn't have PF problems, <laughs> my wife ran a marathon, ran the Chicago Marathon in the Ride 15. So it just goes to show you, this shoe can do everything. There you go. <laughs>